Okay, we are going on with section 7.6, the potential energy of a system. Uh, consider systems of two or more particles or objects interacting via a force that is internal to the system. The kinetic energy equals the algebraic sum of the kinetic energies of all members of the system. In some systems, one object is so massive that it cannot be mo modeled as stationary, and its kinetic energy that it can be modeled as stationary, and its kinetic energy can be neglected. As an example, uh, consider a ball Earth system as the ball falls to Earth. If you recall Newton's third law, wherever there is a uh, an action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That is the simplified version of it. So if the earth pulls down on a, on a ball, the ball pulls up on the earth. Well, of course, acceleration is equal to force, force divided by mass. Well, the mass of the earth is so large that the acceleration is negligible, and that's what they're talking about. So a ball earth system is a ball falls to earth. You can consider only the kinetic energy of the ball. Uh, the acceleration of the earth is negligible. Uh, so imagine the system of the book and the Earth is shown in the, uh, the graph here, uh, interacting via gravitational force. You lift the book slowly from rest through the vertical displacement. Um, delta R is equal to Y final minus Y initial times the unit vector J. That's J in the Y direction. Uh, the work done on the system must appear as an increase in energy of the system. The book at rest before and after we perform the work the, before the energy change in the system is not in the form of kinetic energy. The work kinetic energy theorem does not apply. Um, the energy must appear as some other form of energy stored. After lifting the book, we could release it and let it fall back to the position Y initial. Uh, the book in the system now has kinetic energy, so the source is in the work that was done in lifting the book. While the book was at its highest point, the system had potential to possess kinetic energy. The, so the energy storage mechanism before the book is released is called potential energy. Potential energy of a system can only be associated with specific types of forces acting between members of the system. The amount of potential energy in the system is determined by the configuration of the system. Moving members of the system to different positions or rotating them may change the configuration of the system and therefore its potential energy. Let's derive an expression for potential energy associated with an object at a given location above the Earth's surface. For, for the book, assume the lifting is done slowly with no acceleration. Uh, the applied force is equal to magnitude to the gravitational force on the object. The object is modeled as a particle in equilibrium moving at a constant velocity. So the work done by the external agent on the system, the object and the earth, as the object undergoes upward displacement is as shown. Uh, the work, the external work is the applied force. Well, if, if there's no acceleration, the applied force is mg. Um, so, the, so the F applied dot delta R, so it's mg in the j direction uh, dotted with uh, y final minus y initial j. And you get uh, mg y final minus mg y initial. OK. Um, OK. The work done this. The result is the work done on the system because the applied force is only the force on the system from the environment. The, the gravitational force is internal to the system. Okay, here the work represents a transfer of energy into the system and the system energy appears as potential energy, mgy. So the gravitational potential energy use, use of g of the system, the mass of the object of mass m and the earth is u of g is equal to mgy. We often refer to it as MGH because we talk about the height, MGH. Uh, but in this here, it's expressed as MGY. Now, this is valid only for objects near the Earth's surface where G is constant. We can't talk about a rocket ship that starts on the surface of the Earth and goes into to orbit because G changes as it goes higher into the uh, atmosphere. 
Uh, the units of gravitation potential energy are joules, the same as units of work and kinetic energy. In other words, um, MGY, we have MG is a force, newtons, and Y is meters, so we get newton meters, which is joules. Uh, it's a scalar quantity. The potential energy is a scalar quantity, just like work and kinetic energy. So if we rewrite the equation, uh, the external work is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy, U sub G. The net external work done on the system in this situation appears as a change in the gravitational potential energy of the system. It represents a change in the configuration of the members of the system. Now, it's... Uh, the gravitational potential energy depends only on the vertical height of the object above the surface, uh, above the surface of the Earth. The gravitational, um, we can calculate the work done on the object by the agent moving the object through a displacement, through a displacement having both vertical and horizontal components. Um, the work external equals F applied times delta R, so it's mg in the j direction because it's uh, gravitational acceleration. Um, we dot that with x final minus x initial times i uh, plus y final minus y initial times j. So you can imagine taking something up at a diagonal where there's an x component and a y component. Think of it that way, but if you dot j dot i, since they're 90 degrees, that they're going to equal zero because the cosine of 90 degrees equals zero. So all you end up with is the y components, mgy final minus mgy initial. That's the change in potential energy. So no term involving x in the final result because j dot i equals zero. Um, now in solving problems, choose the reference configuration. You set the gravitational, energy, gravitational potential energy of a system equal to some reference value, normal, normally zero. Uh, so it's possible to change the, the uh, gravitational potential energy just by switching positions. So I've got my, um, this gravitational potential energy uh, on my iPad here. If I were to drop it to the tabletop, it would do some damage. But if I were to drop it to where it went all the all the way to the floor just changing the configuration where the zero reference is i've increased the potential energy because now it has further to drop so the configuration is very where you set the zero point in other words is very very uh different i mean it, it it's very important um okay now let's um do a little quick quiz Choose the correct answer. The gravitational potential energy of a system is always positive, is always negative, or it can be negative or positive. Well, it can be negative or positive because it really depends on where you choose a reference point. The sign of the gravitational potential energy depends on your choice of the zero configuration, where you set your zero point. Okay? Let's say, uh, do an example, the proud athlete and the sore toe. Um, a trophy being shown off by a careless athlete slip, slips from the athlete's hands and drops on his foot. Choosing the floor level as the y equals zero point of your coordinate system, you estimate the change in gravitational potential energy of the trophy earth system as the trophy falls. You repeat the calculation, use, then repeat the calculation using the top of the athlete's head as the origin of coordinates. Um, okay, so in one case, we're going to y equals zero um, is going to be uh, the floor, and the other is the athlete's head is y equals zero. So the tra the trophy changes its vertical posi vertical position with respect to the surface of the Earth. Associated with this change in position is a change in the gravitational potential energy of the trophy Earth system. Now, we evaluate a change in gravitational potential energy defined in this section, so we categorize this, this example as a substitution problem. 
Because there are no numbers provided in the problem statement, it is also an estimation problem. Now, let's assume that the profile is approximately two kilograms. The top of the foot is about 0.5 meters above the floor, you know, five centimeters. And the tro trophy falls from a height of h equal 1.4 meters. Um, so we make the zero reference uh, is, is the floor. To find the change in potential energy of the system, we need to estimate a few values. And we've estimated that the uh, mass is approximately two kilograms and the top of the person's foot is about five centimeters to the floor. And we're assuming that it drops a height of 1.4 meters. So let's calculate the potential energy of the trophy Earth system just before the trophy is released. Uh, two kilograms, 9.8 meters per second, times 1.4 meters, you get 27.4 meters. This is the potential energy in the first, um, it, it, at the initial position. Now let's calculate the gravitational potential energy of the Earth, trophy Earth system when the trophy reaches the athlete's foot. And two kilograms times 9.8 meters per second times 0 0.05 meters. Um, you get 0.98 joules. Um, okay. Uh, now evaluate the change in gravitational potential energy of the trophy Earth system. So the um, MGY final minus MGY initial is 0.98 joules minus 27.4 joules. You get 26.4 joules. Uh, we should probably just keep uh, two digits because of the roughness, roughness of our estimates. Therefore, we estimate the change in gravitational potential energy is minus 26 joules. Um, the, the approximately 26 joules. The system had about 27 joules of gravitational potential energy before the trophy began its fall and approximately one joule of potential energy as the trophy reaches the top of the foot. Okay, now let's redo this. The second part of the, uh, we, we're assuming that the, um, that the zero reference is the, the top of the athlete's head. So we assume that, uh, if we assume that the top of the athlete's head is two meters, um, you know, we, let's say he's just holding it up He's holding the trophy up just a, uh, he's holding it up 60 centimeters. We calculate the gravitational potential energy uh, now I guess he's holding it like 60 centimeters below uh, his head. Uh, if that's if his top of his head is the zero reference. Um, so, uh, the gravitational potential energy there is a minus 11.8 joules and let's calculate it when it reaches below the, um, just at the top of his foot, which is 1.95 meters below the athlete's head, uh, we get minus 38.2 joules and let's evaluate evaluated it's minus 38.2 that's the u final um potential energy initial u initial is equal to minus 11.8 you get 26.4 joules and it's the same 26 joules so the value is the same as before as it must be the change of potential energy is independent of the choice of configuration of the system representing the zero of the potential energy where our reference point is if we wanted to keep only one digit of our estimates, we could write the final result as, as 30 joules. Uh, it's a rough estimate anyway. Okay, now we're gonna talk about elastic potential energy and we'll do experiments with elastic potential energy. But here is a, uh, another type of potential energy. Consider the system of the block and the spring is in the figure. Um, the spring force is the interaction between two mem members um, two members of the system, the spring and the block. The force the, that the spring exerts on the block is Fs equals minus Kx 
The external work done by the applied force on the block spring system as the block moves from X initial to X final is, uh, this is the work, one half KX final squared minus one half KX initial squared. The, is, the initial and final X coordinates of the block measured from its equilibrium position of X equals zero. So the work done on the system is the difference between the initial and final values of the expression related to the system's configuration. So the elastic potential energy function associated with block spring system is mu sub s, the potential energy of the spring, is equal to one half kx squared. Now, um, now the work is the change in potential energy. The external work on the system means the form of energy storage in the system changes. You think of elastic potential energy of a system as energy stored in deforming the spring, one that is either compressed or stretched from its equilibrium position. The elastic potential energy stored in the spring is equal to zero whenever the spring is undeformed, that is x equals zero. The energy stored in the spring when the spring is stretched or compressed is proportional to x squared. Um, mu sub s is always positive in the deformed spring, so because irrespective of whether x is in the positive direction or the negative direction, it's squared, and so that takes care of any negatives. Uh, it would be always be a positive, uh, positive number. Uh, examples of elastic potential energy storage are old style clocks or watches that operate from a wound up spring or little small wind-up toys. Um, now let's look at a uh, graph, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna post another video not related to the PowerPoint with a uh, Walter Fent spring moving up and down. Um, so let's look at this. Uh, what we have here is we have the spring, we have some text in between, uh, and we have a little graph that shows kinetic energy, potential energy and total energy. Um, so the figure shows a spring on a frictionless horizontal surface. Uh, when the block pushes against the spring by an external agent, you know, a person pushing on the spring, the elastic potential energy and the total energy of the system increase. That's figure B. Uh, it's like 75% uh, on the little graph that I see there. Um, when the spring is compressed, the distance x mass, x max, the, electric, the elastic potential energy stored in the spring is one half kx max squared. That's figure C, that's the maximum displacement. Um, now when the block is released, um, when the external force is removed, when the hand is removed, only the force on the block, that is the spring force, uh, forces the block to move to the right. The elastic potential energy of the system decreases, the kinetic, kinetic energy increases, but the total energy remains fixed. In other words, we're transforming the energy from potential energy to kinetic. When the spring returns to its original length, the stored elastic potential energy is completely transformed into kinetic energy of the block. And uh, I think the Walter Fent, um, video will show that a little bit better. Uh, okay, a ball is connected to a light spring suspended vertically. Oops, I'm sorry. A ball is connected to a light spring suspended vertically as shown in the figure. When pulled down from its equilibrium position and released, the ball oscillates up and down. In the system of the ball, the spring, and the earth, what forms of energy are, are there during the motion? There's uh, just kinetic energy and po elastic potential energy. Elastic potential energy. Well, a key word here is the uh, during the motion. If there's motion, that means there's a velocity. If there's a velocity that indicates kinetic energy. So gravity. That a doesn't include um, gravitational energy. B, kinetic and gravitational potential? Well, yes, but where's the uh, elastic energy of the spring? Kinetic, elastic, and gravitational potential energy? 
Well, there we have it. We have, uh, uh, we have all three. The, if you have the elastic potential and the gravitational potential as listed in D, you don't have the uh, kinetic. So that one can't be right. So the answer is C. Uh, the answer is C. This system exi exhibits changes in kinetic energy as well as in both types of potential energy. Now let's just reword the problem. A ball is connected to a light spring suspended vertically as shown in the figure. When pulled down from its equilibrium position and released, the ball oscillates up and down. In the system of the ball and the spring, what in the, now that's a key word. In the system of the ball and the spring, what forms of energy are there during the motion? What did they take out? They took out the uh, ball and the spring and the earth, as in the previous one. So they're leaving out the earth. What forms of energy are there during the motion? We have kinetic and elastic potential. B is kinetic and gravitational potential. Well, it took out the word the earth. So everything that has gravitational potential energy is excluded from the answer. So the answer is A. Um, because the earth is not included in the system, there is no gravitational potential energy associated with the system. Uh, you can imagine uh astronauts doing an experiment in space where they're just uh floating up you know as they're floating they're doing experiment with the spring all right let's see energy bar charts um, this figure shows energy bar an energy bar chart the vertical axis is the amount of energy of a given type in a system. The horizontal axis is the types of energy in the system. So the, the height of it is the amount. Of it. Positionally, it's the type of energy. So the figure, in figure A, the system contains zero energy because the spring is relaxed and the block is not moving. In between figures A and C, the hand does work on the system, compressing the spring and storing the elastic potential energy in the system. In figure D, the block has been released and is moving to the right while still in contact with the spring. Um, so it's at that point in D, it's transforming from potential to kinetic, but notice that the total energy from here on out remains the same. In figure E, the spring return, is returned to the relaxed length and the system now contains only kinetic energy associated with the moving block. So the energy bar chart is a useful representation for keeping track of various types of energy in the system. And this ends our discussion of potential energy. Uh, next we'll discuss, uh, actually, first we're gonna discuss a Walter Fent video. Um, and then we'll discuss section 7.7, .7, conservative and non-conservative forces.